Have you ever come back from a photographic trip all excited about the images you've captured only to find that when you open them in Lightroom they look flat and boring? Well in this video we're going to show you how we take an image that looks pretty uninteresting from the start all the way through to an image that you'd be really be pleased with. So let's dive in and get started. On a recent photographic trip we went all the way to Western Australia to a place called Karajini National Park which is located way up in the northern part of Western Australia in a fairly isolated location and it is an area of spectacular landscape that's been on our list for some time. So let's have a look at what we found when we went there to capture some images. So the Karajini area is characterised by this uh, incredible rich red uh, rocks that are full of iron ore and also the deep gorges and the white trees that are called snappy gums and they are unique to the area and one of the things that we strove to capture. So just to give um, an idea of some of the sort of imagery from this area these are some of the images that I've already worked on but we're going to take a closer look at some images just of the trees and it is a spectacular area that is best visited in the uh, southern winter because in summertime it gets well into the high 40s uh, in, in degrees and it's really unpleasant but it is a most spectacular area absolutely unique and a world heritage area but the, th the other thing that's of interest is the snappy gums which are a unique tree to this area with a bright white uh, trunk and unusual contorted shapes and on this particular afternoon we were chasing some light and looking f to find some compositions with trees and you'll see here that we're sort of looking for the compositions the light was starting to get late in the day and working through looking at a couple of images and you'll see here that as the sun was going down the light was getting better and better um, and raking across the, the landscape but just trying to find the composition that worked was really difficult and then as the sun got really close to going down the colours really came alive and so we've managed to capture a few images that we're pretty happy with but this is the one that we came up with and this is the original capture and this is something like what we got at the end of it so let's now have a look at how we worked that image up from this into something like this now just before we get into the processing I wanted to mention that going to a location like Karajini that is uh, remote and it's also made up of uh, a series of gorges that are also difficult to get in and out of and that follow very contorted shapes so that trying to find the best time of day to photograph inside the gorges is very difficult and we chose to go with a professional photographic guide who works out of Western Australia his name's Adam Monk and I'll put a link in the description and Adam was able to get us into all of these areas at the best times of day and to find some of the really interesting images that we've got so in processing this image you'll see that um, it was actually taken about half an hour after the Sun had set and if we look at the histogram of this unprocessed version you'll see that I made a bit of a boo-boo here and I underexposed the image it could have been at least one stop brighter to uh, to give us a better tonal range but nonetheless we'll, sh we'll see what we can do to make this image really sing and uh, after sunset the, the light became a lot softer but there was still color in the sky that was going to give us the sort of feelings that we really wanted to record from this location so let's step through the processing piece by piece so starting with the raw image as captured we'll step through the processing steps that I've already applied to this image so if we go back and look at our history there's quite a lot of adjustments to here but we'll step through these and you'll see just what's happened so obviously the first thing we did was import the image and you'll see here everything is zeroed and it's as shot so the first thing I did was dramatically increase the exposure now I haven't pushed it all the way up to clip uh, the highlights but I've in it brightened it up considerably nearly a full stop and then the next thing I did was obviously looked at the color temperature because it was uh, recorded after the Sun had set and the color was quite cool given that the uh, main illumination was from the sky and then having changed the color temperature 
Let's have a look at that. It went from 6,100 to 6,800, brightened it up considerably, and then obviously the, this whole scene was lacking in contrast. So I've boosted the contrast quite substantially. And again, it was a little bit of a dance here between exposure and contrast. I've increased the exposure yet again, and I've now pushed the, the brighter parts of the image almost up to clipping, but not quite. And then I've increased the contrast yet again, just trying to get the right balance of feeling. And then I've looked at the color temperature and warmed it up a, a little more. You'll see here, I've shifted it up a little more. So I'm trying to get to the right feeling of the image as to what I remembered from the scene. And then I looked at adjusting the tint, uh, giving the magentas a little more uh, of a boost here to try and get that closer to what I wanted. And then I started to look at trying to bring back the, the details in the sky. The whites and the highlights have been reduced so that I've still retained some colour and detail in the sky. And then to help things along a little bit, I've applied a little bit of dehaze to try and recover some of this colour that was left in the sky after the sun had set. And then I'm still not happy with the foreground area so what I did was I boosted the shadows considerably. You'll see here that I've taken the shadows up by quite a substantial amount and already the image is looking quite different from where we started. But we're not done yet, not by a long uh, stroke. Again, increase the contrast to try and bring back some of that punch that was in the original image or was in my mind when I captured the image. And again, push the shadows up a little more and then applied a little bit more of an adjustment to the colour temperature. The thing is that you can't really judge the colour temperature or the white balance until you've got the tonal range close to what you want. So it's a question of moving backwards and forwards between these settings uh, as you try and adjust it and bring out the details that you want. And again, I've applied a little bit more adjustment to the tint and then I've looked at white balance auto, decided yeah, maybe that wasn't quite so good, but I've left it in place. And then I've added a sky selection and applied a mask to that. And using a series of adjustments, let's just go back and look at that um, masking. Using Lightroom's masking tools to select the sky, I've applied um, quite an adjustment to drop the exposure in the sky and bring back some of the colour and detail. Now you'll see here that there's a bit of a problem. One of the issues with working in remote areas and areas like this is that whenever you change lenses, there's a risk of getting dust on the sensor. And I got quite a lot of dust spots on this uh, sensor uh, through changing and changing lenses. And it's inevitable that you're gonna get some issues. So what I did was um, use the heel tool the healing tool and repaired all of those. We don't need to go through individually, but using the, um, let's just demonstrate that, but using the visualize spots option, there's quite a lot of spots there. Let's just come down and pick that up. You see that there, there's a lot of spots being uh, identified in the sky and I've um, repaired all of those. So a number of steps there. Ideally, if I'd cleaned my sensor before we went out in the afternoon, I may not have had this problem, but then um, I was able to patch all those up. So then coming down, once I've got the sky looking right, I've got the foreground looking fairly close, I've come down to the HSL panel and I've increased the saturation in the oranges. Uh, and this is a tool that's often underutilized by a lot of people to adjust the individual saturation and or luminance of individual colour channels. And here I've, I've adjusted not only the orange, the yellow and the green, just to try and give a little bit of a shift to the colours and brighten things up a little bit more. And by using adjustments to the individual colour channels, you'll see here that I've increased the magentas, the greens, uh, the yellows, orange and red. And in some cases, I've also increased the luminance of some of those color channels just to get that uh, shift. So if we go back to what we had before and then up to what I finally adjusted, you'll see here there that it's shifted 
details in the image and brought out some more of those colours. Um, and then at that point I've gone back to my basic panel and decided that we need to add a little bit of texture and clarity to bring out the finer detail in the image. And let's zoom in and have a look at this in the foreground. Um, before we've added the texture and clarity, afterwards it's made a slight difference and then I've applied more vibrance to boost those colors even more because that's not how I remembered it it was much more vibrant and so I'm getting closer now to the feeling I had when I captured the original data uh, even though it was after the Sun had gone down my memory was of the lighting and the incredible colors of this outback area and then finally I've gone back in and boosted the exposure a bit more and I've moved the blacks. And so it's a process of iteration, of adjusting different settings and then refining and refining. But all of this can happen fairly quickly. So we'll move on now to looking at, I've adjusted the highlights in the masking of the sky and then found that the blue area was getting a little bit too blue so I've reduced the blue saturation and I've increased some of the other colors and you'll see here that there's there's a massive difference that comes in once you start to to bring in those fine tuning adjustments I've brought back a lot of the color that was in the sky where the sun has gone down and left this orange glow in the horizon and that's often largely from dust that's been floating around in the atmosphere but you'll see that often in this outback area. So I've worked my way through doing a few more um, adjustments of the HSL panel just to get it the feeling the way I really wanted it to be and working through the images. And I've then added a, a brush and painted in just along this horizon line because the, we've started to get a little bit of a lighter section there and I wanted to bring that in. So let's just... Um, bring all those in and again some more toning and mucking around with colors to really start to bring that vibrance up and you'll see that with just increases in saturation on particular channels you really start to bring the color out in the image as you recall it and then on the on the masking for the sky I found that it was just getting a little bit too uh, saturated a little bit unbelievable so I took that saturation back a little bit and just tweaked things just a little bit to get them closer to how I felt bearing in mind that each of these steps you're going through and looking at the image and reassessing how it's going to look and then finally just a few minor more tweaks on the temperature and tint on the basic panel let's just go back and see where we were so I've drop the color temperature slightly and increase the tint slightly added a bit more texture and vibrance and then finally I should have gone in earlier and taken the chromatic aberration out of the lenses because it's uh, set at a fairly wide angle and we want to make sure that we're not picking up any color shifts at the edges of the image and then I've gone through and updated all those brushes um, particularly because all of those spots were still visible and let's go all the way up here and look at what we've done you can't really see it here but I've tweaked the exposure added a few more healing areas into this sky that was really um, starting to get problematic and you'll see now that once I've got it to that point if we go back to looking at um, where we started from, it looks like a lot of steps, but a lot of these are quite quickly done. If we look at the original image, that looked pretty uninteresting, but with some careful adjustments, we've got an image that we're much more happy with. And now moving into Photoshop, having done all of the heavy lifting in Lightroom, we can apply some extra finesse in Photoshop. So let's look at that now. So you might think that there's enough adjustments being done in Lightroom to make this image more than acceptable, but there are a few extra tweaks that I like to use 
uh, for my style of photography that are only available or can only be used in Photoshop the way I like to use them. So the first thing that we've done is we've we've brought this image into Photoshop and you'll remember that in the processing in Lightroom I did nothing with the uh, sharpening or noise reduction because I found that even with Lightroom's new noise reduction filter I'm still getting better results using a third party plugin such as um, Topaz Denoise. So the first thing we will do is we'll have a look at and we'll zoom in to a reasonable amount and look at this image. Uh, let's have a look at 50% and what I did was I took it into, I made a duplicate layer, you don't need to do that but this is for illustration purposes. I made a duplicate layer and I applied some denoise and that also applies a bit of sharpening and we may not see it so much here but certainly down in the grey areas or the other tonal areas, let's zoom into 100% so that we can see it a little more clearly. Um, it certainly does bring out more of that fine detail in the image and uh, you can apply this and then blend it if you want to in Photoshop whereas using uh, Lightroom's tools you can't really apply them as we can here and you'll see here that in the background there is a road that I've left in the image I don't really mind that because it's showing us the setting some people might uh, dislike that but certainly when it comes down to improving the fine detail it may not be particularly noticeable here we're going at 200% um, but on pretty much any image that you uh, want to work with you'll find that there's not only just a little bit of noise incorporated in the image this was shot at 64 ISO but because it was a long exposure there will be some noise in the image and it also helps to bring back some of the fine detail so let's zoom back out and fit screen with that and we can work from here. So the first thing I did was apply Topaz's uh, denoise that also includes a little bit of sharpening and that just brings out a little more detail in the image. But I found then that I was still looking at this image and there was a, still a bit of a problem there with some of those pesky spots in the sky. So what I did was I made a copy of the sky part of the image and pasted it in on a separate layer and then I applied some blurring to that layer and let's just turn that uh, layer mask off made a copy of what I had selected as the sky and you'll see here that with the blurring filter applied which was quite simply using the Gaussian blur filter from Photoshop I applied a certain amount of blur to the sky because there's no detail in this part of the sky uh, you don't have to worry about keeping detail fine but what I did then do was apply a mask to the image and let's just overlay that paint it on fairly roughly in fact I probably should have um, feathered that so let's just feather that so that we get a nice soft transition and so we've got this part of the sky that had those problem blotches still in it We've blurred that part of the sky and made it much more pleasing and removed those nasty little artefacts. And the next thing I like to do is I like to apply a Silver Effects Pro filter to the image but blend it to luminosity. And the Silver Effects Pro brings out a lot of mid-tone contrast. And if you're not um, a user of the Nick products, you can use, use another filter in Photoshop called the High Pass Filter that does a similar thing. I don't think it does as good a job, but let's just zoom in and have a look at what happens when we apply the high structure smooth filter in this case, uh, blended to luminosity. You'll see that it brings out a lot of mid-tone contrast that then really helps that image jump off the screen and certainly jump off the paper. Uh, let's just move back here. Uh, certainly lifts in these areas, boosts that mid-tone and we use that filter. If you're a NIC user you'll know how to access the NIC filters using the NIC menu. Silver Effects Pro. Choose a filter that works with your image. One of the high structure ones works quite quite well but then what you do is you blend it to luminosity and you'll see here that um, uh, I've left the opacity at 100% normally I would reduce that 
down to somewhere near 50 percent but because that does tend to take a little bit of the color out of the image i've then added a, a tonal contrast and pro contrast filter just to bring back a little bit of that color and also add a little bit of contrast now as i said if you're not a user of um, uh, Nick, Nick filters you can achieve a similar result using what's called the high pass filter and what we would do to, to use that this is the same image and I've just substituted the high pass filter for the Nick filter with all of your adjustments so far including that blurring of the sky we make a composite layer which is control alt shift E or command alt shift E on a Mac to create a duplicate image and then you sorry not a duplicate a composite image we go to filter other high pass and you'll see it looks quite bizarre and you need to play around with the settings to find what works for you but somewhere between two and five um, is probably the right way to go maybe two and three let's say leave that at three you'll see here that the screen looks quite bizarre click OK looks terrible but what we do is we blend the image to overlay blend mode and you'll see now that it's done a similar sort of thing it's boosted that mid-tone contrast but either way that's what I like to do I like to give the image a little bit more dimensionality and so moving back to the image that I made using silver effects we'll work through with that and again I've applied a uh, Nick tonal contrast and Pro contrast you could do a similar thing by just applying um, uh, something like uh, a, an increased saturation layer if you wanted to let's go back to the original so at this point I've added some details to remove that patchiness in the sky I've applied the mid-tone contrast to bring up those mid-tone details and then I've brought back a little bit more color and color contrast just to boost that up and then finally I'm going to add a slight curves adjustment again to increase the, the contrast and I like to use often the linear contrast preset in Photoshop that gives you a good starting point and then of course you can adjust it to suit but I've applied that to the image just to give it a little bit stronger contrast and then I felt Mm, that blue in the sky is starting to get a little bit overdone so let's just reduce that a little bit by selectively decreasing the blue saturation and painting it in with a mask into that area of sky where it was starting to get too blue so we're pretty close to the money now and then finally I just find, uh, applied a very slight vignette to just concentrate the viewers attention on the middle part of the image and that's our final image so if we go back to look at where we started with the image as captured you'll see that there's a dramatic difference between what looked like a fairly flat and uninteresting image and then we've turned it into something quite different using a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop so to summarize everything if you've come back from your photo trip and your images as captured are not setting you on fire spend a little bit of time processing them because you'll find that often within those images that look fairly bland there are a few gems so i hope that's been of interest and i look forward to seeing you again